Hey there, health enthusiasts. Welcome back to our channel. Today we've got the topic whooping cough, also called pertussis. Before we begin, please subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest videos. Without waiting, let's dive into the topic. Pertussis, commonly known as whooping cough, is a respiratory tract infection characterized by a paroxysmal cough. Infants less than six months of age are at greatest risk of complications due to lack of maternal immunity transfer, such as apnea, severe pneumonia, and encephalopathy, and are most commonly infected by spread from family members. The growing majority of cases now are in persons aged 10 years and older, which has led to increased booster recommendations. Can occur in immunized children, but the illness is generally less severe. Patients are infectious just before and for 21 days after the onset of cough, if untreated, caused by the bacterium Bordetella pertussis, occasionally by Bordetella par pertussis. Humans are the sole reservoir and are spread via aerosolized droplets. They infect from nasopharynx and end primarily in the bronchi and bronchioles. A mucopurulent sanguineous exudate fills the small airways. Lung parenchyma and bloodstream are not invaded therefore blood culture results are negative. Risk factors for pertussis include prematurity, non-vaccination in children, contact with an infected person, epidemic exposure, pregnancy, underlying cardiac, pulmonary, neuromuscular, or neurologic disease. Minor complications during the illness include epistaxis, nausea and vomiting, subconjunctival hemorrhages, and ulcers of the frenulum. Complications include pneumonia, hypoxic encephalopathy, failure to thrive, otitis media, tuberculosis activation, hernia, reinduction of paroxysmal coughing with upper respiratory infections, seizures, cerebral hemorrhage, coma, and death. Complications among adolescents and adults include syncope, sleep disturbance, incontinence, rib fractures, and pneumonia. Mild or atypical illnesses. The incubation period of pertussis ranges from 3 to 12 days. The features can be divided into catarrhal, paroxysmal, and convalescent stages. Stage 1, catarrhal phase, consists of nasal congestion, rhinorrhea, and sneezing, variably accompanied by low-grade fever, tearing, and conjunctival suffusion. Stage 2, paroxysmal phase, paroxysms of intense coughing, lasting up to several minutes. In older infants and toddlers, the paroxysms of coughing occasionally are followed by a loud whoop as inspired air goes through a still partially closed airway. Infants younger than 6 months do not have the characteristic whoop but may have apneic episodes. post of vomiting and turning red with coughing are common in affected children. Infants may develop apnea and or cyanosis with coughing spasms. Stage 3, Convalescent Phase, Chronic Cough which may last for weeks. Older children, adolescents, and adults may not exhibit distinct stages. Symptoms in these patients include uninterrupted coughing, feelings of suffocation or strangulation, and headaches. Vaccinated adults usually develop only prolonged bronchitis without a whoop, whereas unvaccinated adults are more likely to have whooping and post of emesis. Examination Findings Children are usually well between coughing spasms. Fever is uncommon. Conjunctival hemorrhages and facial petechiae are common and result from intense coughing. Dehydration also is common. Hypoxia should be considered and assessed. Whoop can be observed in unvaccinated adults, as can post of emesis. Pertussis should be included in the differential diagnosis of protracted cough with cyanosis or vomiting, persistent rhinorrhea, and marked lymphocytosis. Assess if other family members have a frequent cough or if in contact with a positive patient. Laboratory confirmation is not necessary for diagnosis but may be helpful for infection control. CBC shows leukocytosis. Diagnosis of pertussis is mostly done presumptively with a supporting history. A nasopharyngeal aspirate swab for PCR is the investigation of choice. The test is usually negative after 21 days or 5 to 7 days after effective antibiotic therapy has been commenced. Pertussis serology IgA may be detectable two weeks after the onset of the illness, but rarely affects clinical management. Chest radiography may reveal perihilar infiltrates or edema, atelectasis, consolidation. 
culture, which is not usually done, is taken from the posterior nasopharynx. It is grown on Egan Low or Bordeguing Oagar and modified Stainer Schulte media. It grows after three to four days, however can be confirmed after ten days. A negative culture finding does not exclude the diagnosis of pertussis, a clinical case of pertussis, an acute coughing illness that lasts at least 14 days in a person with at least one characteristic pertussis symptom, paroxysmal cough, post-tussive vomiting, or inspiratory whoop, a cough that lasts at least 14 days in an outbreak setting. A confirmed case is defined as any cough illness in which pertussis is isolated and cultured. A case consistent with the clinical case definition confirmed by PCRSA findings or epidemiologic linkage to a laboratory confirmed case. Supportive therapy is the mainstay. Hospitalization for patients at risk for severe disease and complications. Antibiotics do not affect the duration and severity of illness, they can hasten the eradication of B. pertussis in the respiratory tract and help to prevent its spread. For all ages, azithromycin is the preferred agent. Two months or allergic to macrolides may be treated with trimethoprimsulfamethoxazole. Prophylaxis with macrolides is recommended for household and close contacts of the patient. Prevention, a cellular pertussis vaccine plus diphtheria and tetanus toxoids, DTAP, is given. This vaccine can also be given for third trimester maternal vaccination to prevent pertussis infection in infants younger than two months. According to RCH guidelines, antibiotics must be considered if the patient is diagnosed in the catarrhal or early paroxysmal phase, may reduce severity, coughs for less than 14 days, may reduce spread or reduces school exclusion period, admitted to hospital, has complications such as pneumonia, cyanosis, apnea. The antibiotic options. Neonates, azithromycin. Children who cannot swallow tablets, clarithromycin liquid. Children who can swallow tablets, azithromycin. If macrolides are contraindicated, trimethoprimsulfamethoxazole. The child must be excluded from school and the presence of others outside the home, especially infants and young children, until received five days of therapy or coughing for more than 21 days. Unimmunized or partially immunized children diagnosed with pertussis should still complete the pertussis immunization schedule. Notify the disease. RCH Guideline for Prophylaxis for Contacts Prophylaxis is aimed at preventing the spread to infants 6 months. Fully vaccinated do not require prophylaxis. The prophylaxis regimen same as the treatment. Vaccination Close contacts that are not up to date with their pertussis immunization should be given DTPA or DTPA as soon after exposure as possible. Consider DTPA for adults who have not had pertussis-containing vaccine in the last 10 years. Unimmunized, love, doses, household and close child care contacts less than 7 years of age must be excluded from school or child care for 14 days from the last exposure to infection or until they have taken 5 days of effective antibiotics. Antibiotics are given to close contact with a confirmed case of pertussis, whilst index case infectious, less than 21 days of cough and less than 5 days effective antibiotics. The first contact was within 14 days, or within 21 days, for infants 6 months. Children, age 6 months or love, doses pertussis vaccine or household member age 6 months or attend childcare in the same room as infant 6 months. Adults, regardless of immunization status, expectant parents in the last month of pregnancy or health care worker in maternity hospital or newborn nursery or child care worker in close contact with infants 6 months or household member aged 6 months. No antibiotics for contact with index case, while no longer infectious, greater than 21 days of cough and greater than 5 days effective antibiotics. We wrap up today's exploration of whooping cough. It's crucial to ensure that you and your loved ones are up to date with vaccinations. If you found this video helpful or informative, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends and family. Subscribe to our channel for more insightful content on various health topics. Thank you for joining us today. Stay well, stay informed, and take care of yourself. Until next time.